Welcome, my name is Lori Carney, and this webinar is the Beyond the Cleanse Transition Webinar. It's for everybody who is on day five of the Whole Foods Cleanse. So first of all, I just wanna say a huge congratulations, you did it. Um, so tomorrow morning, you are gonna wake up as a graduate of the five-day Whole Foods Cleanse. So let's celebrate all the success that you have had this last week, uh, and know that today is the last day. So we are still hanging on, and that glass of wine is going to taste so much better tomorrow after you've done this five days. So again, celebrate your success. So today in the webinar, we're going to be doing mainly three things. We're going to be reviewing the worksheet that is on your downloads page. You do not need the worksheet to listen to this webinar, um, but it is helpful to have a piece of paper, a notebook, something to write on, so you can decide what is the best way for you to transition out of the cleanse. Um, we're also going to talk about clarity on your future and accountability of what you learn throughout this cleanse. Uh, we wanna keep that momentum going and continue on your health journey going forward. At the end, I have a bonus of the power of positive thinking that if you like, just keep on listening after we're done with this webinar. So in the worksheet, again, you don't need to have it in front of you, but the first thing I want you to think about is how do you feel? How do you feel after day five of the Whole Foods Cleanse? A lot of people talk about having this abundance of energy, their skin feels clear, their brain fog is lifted. So connect to the difference of how you feel being supported with whole nutrient-dense food for five days. We, I also want you to think about what are the good habits that you really enjoyed this last week. Um, I know some people talked about they just loved having that lemon hot water in the morning or lemon water, um, making time to really prep and plan that they felt good that when they were hungry, there was a plan in place and so that they knew what to do. Um, a lot of people love trying the new recipes and saying, this is really delicious. I thought being on the cleanse, I would be like, hungry and the food wouldn't be good um, and just having fun cooking at home and creating time for yourself um, especially um, moms we tend to want to focus on everybody else before us but when we truly do focus on ourselves first our health care our self-care we are going to be the best person to help other people and then the third thing is, are you willing to give up any of these positive benefits and habits that you learned? And I want you to think about like, why would you give them up? Um, and if yes, let's really discuss that. So again, the Beyond the Cleanse worksheet is on the downloads page if you would like to look at it, otherwise just put it on a piece of paper. So how are you feeling now? Um, you know, how is your bloating? I know people in the Facebook group have been commenting, you know, oh, my stomach looks flatter. Uh, a lot of people talk about their food cravings have reduced, um, better digestion, a lot of things have been moving along. Um, how was your sleep? I know last night I slept so deep and good. Uh, improved clarity of mind and then weight loss as well. So we're going to talk about now transitioning out of the cleanse, some options and some ideas. I believe in bioindividuality, meaning every single person on this cleanse is completely different from the next. Every body is different. So one way to transition out is going to work for one person and not the other person. So just look and listen to see what's going to be best for you. So option one is just to continue with the whole foods cleanse. Um, so if you absolutely love this way of eating and this style of eating, you are absolutely welcome to keep this way of eating. It's very similar to the paleo diet. So if you look up recipes for paleo, um, that would be a great way to do it. Um, this is the way I mainly eat. Um, I do it probably about 90% of the time. But now if you do choose to stay on the cleanse, I would just suggest you hang back a little bit on the supplements if you were taking supplements during the cleanse. So maybe just taking like one B vitamin, one C vitamin, um, depending on the weather, you know, if you're, if it's sunny a lot, then you can cut back to like a thousand IUs of vitamin D. Um, we want to cycle the milk thistle. So you could take it daily for two weeks and then not for two weeks. It actually loses its efficacy if we take it for too long. So we do not want to take it for too long. Um, option number two is actually just to extend the whole foods cleanse. So a lot of people go, wow, I did it. I did it for five days. Now what? 
Well, if you want, maybe, you know, I know there are some people that are choosing to do it for seven days, for 10 days, for 14 days. So if you do want to do a seven day cleanse, then you would end Sunday night. Um, if you want to do a 10 day cleanse and you're going to be ending Wednesday night, um, a 14 day cleanse, you know, then it's the next Sunday. So think about if you want to extend it for a certain amount of time, um, post your goal in the Facebook group so we can support you for some additional support. I know you're not going to be alone at all. So the secret to change is really just focusing all of our energy, um, not on fighting like all the foods that we can't have or the habits that we're letting go of, but just on building the new. So think about again, all the foods that you can eat. So we're going to just continue to focus on that nutrient dense whole foods, the vegetables, fruit for dessert, um, the brown rice, the quinoa, the oats, um, good, healthy, wild protein, healthy fats, nuts, seeds, avocados, lots and lots of water, um, detoxifying tea. It's basically, we're just taking out the processed food. We're taking out the junk. Um, so sometimes people can do like a revision of the cleanse as well, or maybe they do it, but they add in some red meat, some pork, some caffeine. So you decide what's going to be best for you. It's a lot about small steps. So option number three, and this is where most people are going to be, is how do I safely reintroduce the food so I can see what is works, what works well for my own unique body? So one, um, we want to think about those top three inflammatory foods that we cut out while we were detoxing. So that would be the gluten, the dairy, and the sugar. Um, those are the ones that tend to cause havoc in our bodies. So we want to add them back one at a time so you can get a sense of how that particular food impacts your unique body. And that's by listening to our body and determining what works best for you. If in the ideal world, I would say continue on this cleanse for about seven to 10 or 14 days. The longer you go, the bitter, bigger reaction you're going to have when you introduce the foods. So it's up to you with what feels best for you. Suggest to go with dairy first and avoid dairy for three days. So that means um, tomorrow at the end of the cleanse. So you put dairy in Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and you see how you feel. So if you have things like diarrhea, a lot of gas, maybe your stomach is like bloating or swelling, um, a lot of cramping, nausea, headaches, um, a lot of dairy has to do with skin issues, so acne and rash. And dairy also has a lot to do with congestion. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, my allergies are worse, well, maybe it's the dairy. Maybe it's you know the runny nose, the tightness in the throat, wheezing, different things like that. So listen to your body and see how it feels. So if everything is good, you're not having any symptoms, keep dairy, then keep it in your diet. If you're having symptoms, then take it out of your system again. We want to make sure not to have dairy. And when I went to the Institute of Integrated Nutrition, it was really interesting when I learned, you know, 80% of us actually have some sort of intolerance to dairy, but it varies. So like for me, um, I'm sensitive to dairy, but I can have a little bit of like Greek yogurt, you know, it's fermented. Um, I can have a little bit of cheese, but if I have too much, I'm going to have some of these symptoms. So listen to your body and see what works for you. Um, number two would be gluten. So you've already done the dairy for three days and maybe you're sticking off of it. Now you're going to avoid gluten. So that's going to be listening to your body for digestive issues. Again, a lot of like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Um, gluten also is um, associated with a lot of fatigue, being tired, brain fog, um, ADD, um, anxiety, headaches, pain in your body, inflammation of the joints. Uh, it also has a lot to do with our mood, like depression and mood swings. I know that when I eat gluten, I get knee pain. And I've had knee pain since high school. And it's just amazing when I stay off of gluten, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no knee pain. For me, a lot of you know, I suffered from you know level 10 headaches for years after traumatic brain injury. And so when I have gluten, I feel more pain in my head. So see how your body reacts when you put in gluten. 
So the last inflammatory food to reintroduce would be sugar. So we want to take sugar back for about three days as well. Um, if gluten and dairy both feel good in your body, um, you can keep them in. But if you are having any symptoms, then keep those out and just safely reintroduce sugar. So when you have that craving for sugar, our body naturally wants sweet foods. And we have a lot of sweet foods in our system. In the, in the like natural foods like sweet potatoes and fruit and different things like that. So a sugar, you know, when it enters into our bloodstream, it wreaks havoc on our blood sugar level. So it pushes it way high. And so we might feel excited. We might be, like feel tension. Um, and then it drops it really low. And that is what causes issues with fatigue and depression and exhaustion. So listen to your body. Um, we want to get off the roller coaster of sugar. Um, and you, as you probably all know, sugar causes weight gain and there's a lot of mood swings and headaches. Um, it causes these really unhealthy cravings that we feel like we need to have more sugar fatigue, inflammation, and then sugar feeds disease as well. So you might be thinking, okay, I'm done with the five days, I, but I do wanna add something new into my diet. So maybe you stick to the dirty dozen and the clean 15 list. Um, so if you just buy these 12 dirtiest foods, organically, you're going to cut your pesticides by 80% of your body. So maybe that's what you do is when you go to the store, you're going to focus on buying those 12 top foods that have the most pesticides organically. And I know budget is a concern, but when we invest in ourselves, it is really the best investment we can make. We are then more energetic, we're more creative, we're more productive. So it, we will reap the rewards. And I absolutely think preventative care is the smart way to go instead of being reactive um, and having a disease or a diagnosis of something. So when you add these in, it is so important for us to listen to our body. Our body is telling us messages all day and it's up to us if we listen to them. So see what it's like um, if you're noticing any symptoms, um, then clean up your diet again and then add them one by one. Um, this detox can be done over and over again. So maybe you go back to the way you're eating um, and then in a month you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this again and I'm gonna do it now for 10 days or whatever it is. But what's the glory of this is that you can do this over and over again. Um, and just know like, it's great to eat this nutrient-dense, delicious food that also makes you feel great um, and it supports our health. So listen to that. See what it's like when you eat you know, junk food. Um, how do you feel afterwards? And know that um, when what we eat really affects our system, our emotions. So eat what makes you happy, not just happy in the moment, but happy long term. I had this aha moment, you know, I think it was like six years ago or five years ago when it was like, oh my gosh, what we eat actually changes my mood. It actually makes me feel better. Um, and I never even understood that there was a connection between the two. So back to the worksheet um, number four. So think about how are you going to eat after the cleanse? So write that down. Are you going to continue to eat this way? Maybe you're going to continue to eat this way, but maybe like 80 to 90% of the time. Um, and don't feel guilty when you have that glass of wine or have something like that. Just be mindful and enjoy every bit of it. Uh, maybe you extend the cleanse. Maybe you decide to slowly reintroduce the foods. This cleanse is the start of elimination diet. So it's a great way for you to understand what works and what doesn't work in your body. Uh, or maybe you just focus on that dirty dozen list. So see what works best for you. Um, number five, I would like you to think about some of the bad habits those unhealthy attachments that you notice during this cleanse. Um, it is amazing. I think I've done this eight or nine times of a cleanse, different recipes each time, but I notice different things. And that's what a lot of detoxers say too, that each time they cleanse, they have different reactions. They notice different things. Um, you know, in the past, I've noticed that I've snacked on my daughter's foods. Um, eating when I'm not hungry. Um, a lot of people miss um, having like their diet soda in the morning. But I think um, 
what I hear the most is probably just the mindlessly eating that we just pick up stuff and we just start to eat and we're not even, we're not thinking about, am I really hungry? Um, and if I'm not hungry, maybe I just need to take a walk. Maybe I need to talk to a friend. Maybe I'm just thirsty. I need to drink more water. So thinking about how, um, or what, kind of unhealthy habits did you notice? What were those unhealthy attachments? So when we make these changes, um, sometimes some personalities can make really big changes, but for long-term change, it's really about small steps. So picking things that you know you can be successful at. I always think about that, like that low-hanging fruit. Because once you do one great thing, then you're like, yeah, I'm so awesome, I can do this. And then you go to the next and the next level. And um, so think about what is that one healthy habit that you really enjoyed. And maybe it is just drinking enough water for the day. Uh, maybe it is just keeping gluten out. Uh, maybe it's about always trying new recipes or having two home cooked meals a week. Think about what's one healthy habit that you want to do. We are the only ones who are responsible for creating our life and we can all create a life that we love. And a lot of it has to do with our habits and what we eat. And that is something that is in our control. So conversely, I also want you to think about a bad habit that you feel is holding you back in life. Um, What's something that you don't want to pick up again? Uh, you have gone five days to cleanse. So if you are a soda drinker, if you are a cookie eater, <laughs> whatever it is, think about that thing that is not good for you. Um, so a lot of times people also have a coffee addiction. And so coffee is good for some people. Some people it, it gives um, anxiety to but it's a lot of what you put in the coffee. So maybe you're changing um, the cream, the cream that you put in. And for some people it's like, oh gosh, I don't move every day. And I really um, enjoyed taking care of myself, getting outside a little bit every day or moving my body. So maybe it's just letting go of not moving every day. Mindlessly grabbing candy from like does everybody have that coworker that just always has food on their at their desk? They mean well, they do, um, but maybe you're just not going to do that. Or like we talked about before, drink enough water. So this detox is not a short-term diet. I made it out to be more of a long-term lifestyle change that you did this five days so you could listen to your body. Because uh, what I realized is that so many people, they do it for a short term and they go, I feel so great. So then you can connect emotionally. And when we connect emotionally, that is when there is going to be a long-term change. So in the downloads webpage, I have all these down these bonus guides. So take a look at that. There's some additional recipes in there. There's an eating out guide. Um, I have a 101 video resource. If you're like, I have never used this ingredient before, maybe you just want to read or listen to a video about that. Um, I have a source about my favorite yoga resources that's on YouTube. So if you just want to go, I only have 10 minutes today, I have a go for easy to the hardest, um, different um, yoga practices on there. The Dirty Dozen, the Clean 15, the printable list is on that website. I have um, a document on how to deepen your cleanse if you do this again. Maybe you want to take it to the next level. A detox supplement guide. Um, also, I have some webinars that I've done before too. So if you want to dive deeper, detoxing your body, detox secrets, how to cut the sugar habit. Um, so all of this information is going to remain on this page for at least three months with your password. So make sure you go in and download it all. I wanted to point out um, one of my favorite bonus guides. So I created a make it last, your post how to guide. So it's about how to add these healthy habits into our daily, weekly, and monthly um, day, time. How to have like your meal planning template, how to write that out, um, a pantry stocking guide list. I love having certain foods in my pantry. So when I have a day that I did plan right, I can go, I can quickly whip this up because I have everything in my pantry. I also created a worksheet that's called my Backslides Habit Worksheet. Um, 
the got the road to being healthy you know a lot of people think it's just like this straight up no it's always going to be up and down and that's life we need to have these struggles in our life so that we can grow to go up even further and so when we have these backslides when we feel ourselves headed down that road that's unhealthy make sure you pay attention and listen to how you feel and go on that worksheet and then you can move yourself back up. So here is just the guide of all the different pages, what we have um, for shopping lists and different things like that. So we can decide, you know, when we don't plan, a lot of times the day is going to kind of just run us and maybe you're going to fast food, you're making not making the right choices, or you can plan your day to be the healthiest. Now, if this interests you that you want to dive in deeper, I do have private health coaching and I want to give all of you a gift today. So if you would like, um, you can have a 30 minute free consult with me. The kind of clients that I work with on a private basis are more people who adults that are eating some type of processed food. Um, typically, they have some mindset um, issues that maybe they're thinking that they can't do this, that they've tried all these other diets before. So I really work with switching up the mindset and we also work with adding in whole foods. So if that is you, let me know, email me with your general availability and we'll set up a time. I work with clients over the phone. I do a video just like this. I also meet with people in person if you're in the Rosemont, Minnesota area, but we talk about your specific goals. Every single person that I've coached is different every single one and everybody has you know like about five to seven kind of red flags that need to be worked on but they're always different and so when you have that private coaching it is just about you and moving yourself forward um, so I have sessions um, packages that are four eight and twelve sessions and we basically go on the timeline that works for you some people need more support, um, so we go weekly. Some people don't need as much support, um, and so we might go twice a month or even monthly. So, But my whole goal is not about short-term change. This is about changing your life so when 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, you're still choosing healthy things. Um, I also just want to let you know I do a lot of corporate and corporate workshops and I go to organizations. So if your company would like to be inspired um, to have better health, please let me know. I make it really fun and engaging. And I think, uh, you know, webinars, I still feel a little out of my um, comfort zone here, but I love being in front of people. And it's um, really great to get to know people that you see, you know, on a quarterly basis or every other month. And then some people I do once a month. So let me know if that's what you would like. Um, I also love hearing feedback. Um, this cleanse is made for you. I think about like where I was about six, seven years ago when I was eating my bagels and pizza and Diet Coke. Um, but I'm always looking to improve my program. So if there is something that you're just like, I love this part of it, or I really didn't like this. I know sometimes it's hard, like you feel like you're complaining, but it's really helpful to me for the program to grow. So if you have any comments or feedback, please call me or email me. I would love to hear what you think. I also want to invite you all to be inspired by some of the social media I have. So I have a Facebook page. It's called Be Mindful Health. So I post in there almost every single day, something that's positive, uplifting. So if you want to receive those posts every day, you just need to go to see first um, in your notifications. Otherwise, with the algorithms, it's probably not going to show up. I also have lots of other places. If you are local, I have, I run a meetup group called Want to Be Healthy South Metro. I have Pinterest page. I'm on LinkedIn. And I also have a private page, which you are all going to be invited to. Basically, anybody who's ever paid me for anything gets to be invited to this VIP support group. So it's on Facebook. It's a little bit more interactive. You can go on there and just say like, oh my gosh, there's cookies right now in the break room. What am I supposed to do? You can go ahead and do that. Um, so the next thing is um, I just want to find out if you have any questions about the detox or about moving forward. Please reach out to me at any time and I would be happy to answer them. So next is the bonus section. So if you are like, okay, I'm good with the cleanse, I'm good with my mindset, and I don't want to hear this, go ahead, you can log out right now. But I wanted to add this bonus because 
this is what I noticed uh, holds people back the most. It's their mindset. So I want you to think about how is your mindset. And when we change how we think, our life completely turns out to be Goes, goes in a different direction, we have different results. And I always think about, you know, people try the same thing over and over again, and I used to do this too, and we expect different results. But that's actually the definition of insanity. We have to change some things to have different results, and a lot of that is gonna be in the mind. So an optimist, you know, we look for the good in every problem or difficulty. So when things go wrong, as they will, um, you know, like I have a lot of times I'm like, oh, that's okay. You know, I'm going to find something positive about it and something to grow. And so that is the mindset that we want. We want to have that mindset that problems are going to happen. Absolutely, they're going to. But how can you learn from them? And then instead of having them take you down and being reactive to that. So when we believe in ourselves, I mean, absolutely anything is possible. So I would love for you to do an exercise with me. Uh, write down a limiting belief, a negative thought that may be holding you back in life. Uh, a lot of times people just think I'm not worthy um, of something. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not worthy to have this better job. I am... Um, um, I can't eat healthy food. I just, in my junk food, that's what, you know, these are all things that are holding you back in life. Um, and so if you think about, yeah, you know, I just can't eat healthy food. I just can't do it. Think about, is this belief actually true? Well, probably not. It's probably not absolutely 100% true. But then how does this thought serve you? Well, all of these negative thoughts that we just were talking about, they don't serve you at all. And a lot of times, we're t we have this in our mind and it's not true and it's holding us back. So how would your life be different if you didn't have that limiting belief or that limiting thought? So one thing you can do is you can reframe that negative thought into an affirmation. And when I first learned about affirmations in school, I actually kind of made fun of them a little bit. But I have to say they absolutely work. Um, they've worked on me and I, they've worked on many, many clients. But if you have that question of, you know, I just can't say no to junk food, you know, to say, I love nourishing my body with healthy and good food. Or I choose to be happy um, because it's healthy for me. Just different things like that that you can say over and over and over again. And our mind just starts to believe them. So think about what kind of affirmations you would like to say to help you move forward in your life. Um, maybe it's like, oh, others look up to me because of my positive attitude. Life just loves me. Um, I am free of the fear of mistakes and failure. Errors and failures are just necessary to achieve success. I act without fear and failure, and I feel uber happy. So whatever feels good to you. I say affirmations now that I came up with like years ago and I think, my goodness, I don't even remember feeling that way. Um, and so it just shows me like how far I have come. So I choose happiness. I choose success and abundance in my life. So how are you going to implement these affirmations each day? I like to write them on note cards and I place them in my closets, my walk-in closets, my bathrooms, in the kitchen. Um, I like to have affirmations listed on my phone. Um, sometimes my password's a little creative um, so that I can be rem to remind myself. So when you say the affirmations, um, sometimes I kind of felt like at first, oh, I'm lying, but just feel them and visualize them so you can help become them. So make a decision today and every day just to change the old negative thought patterns that block you because they're, they're, if you can have the positive mindset, it's going to help us to develop and grow and reach our full potential. You know, a lot of times people talk about, you know, is the glass uh, half empty or half full? Well, yeah, it's half full, but also like just be grateful we have a glass, right? I mean, there's a whole different mindset um, when you can think of life that way. So we want to not only cleanse out the junk food, we want to cleanse the junk that it's in our mind. These are toxic thoughts and we want to continue to just like adding in nutrient dense food. We're adding in positive affirmations so we can focus on gratitude every day, multiple, multiple times a day. But we believe whatever we become, we believe. 
So think about what negative thought holds you back. Um, are they moving you forward? Knowing that we are the only ones responsible for our lives. We create our own experiences and they really do begin with our thoughts. I love the quote by Buddha that we are shaped by our thoughts and we become what we think. So if we do not think that we are a success, we probably won't be a success. So when we change our thoughts, uh, we completely can change the direction of our life. And this is one of my favorite quotes by Henry Ford. He says, you know, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right either way. If you think you can't stay away from junk food, you're, you won't. But if you think that you can, you have to fill your mind with hope so that you can do that. So I just want to say again, thank you all so much for being here. Um, it has been a truly amazing week, and I hope you feel grateful to yourselves that you took this time out. You carved out your busy calendar five days to take care of yourself. Um, if you have any questions or anything please let me know, reach out to me. I'm still going to be on our Facebook group for a while. So be there or email me or um, give me a call and we can talk through things. So anyway, thank you so much. Wishing you all a beautiful day.